Jay Sono here. Today, I got something interesting to talk to you about and something you might not have known. And I'm gonna be telling you about fish that have ears. Yep, fish have ear bones inside of their skull that helps them with sound, hearing of sound, and also for like balance. And so um, this, what I'm holding right here is a black drum skull. So this particular fish uh, it was is pro was probably like 40 inches. I mean, it was a good size, you know, fish that uh, I I found um, a couple months after it had died. You know, I kind of let it uh, deteriorate up by the sand dunes, and about two months later, it looked like this. But if you shake it, can you hear that? It's a rattle. Uh, those are the ear bones that are inside the skull. Now you can. You can find these, this is a drum fish, so uh, how it, it um, communicates is by sound and how it finds its food many times is by sound. So the ear bones on this are big and they're gonna be about that big. And actually I've got a machete here and so I'm gonna try to chop this sucker open so that y'all can see what they look like. And the reason it's important that we look at these ear bones, uh, otoliths is what they're called in the science world, the reason that's important is because it can tell us a lot of information. These bones um, are similar to a tree that has rings on it. And so you can cut into it and you can age the fish uh, on that. You can also look at something called stable isotopes um, and see other information that's helpful on maybe what its diet was, uh, maybe where it lived, things like that. So. Um, now these aren't the only fish, the uh, black drum fish aren't the only fish. Uh, you can find these in, uh, in all different species. And actually I do have another species here and one that you're very familiar with. Uh, this is, uh, you probably heard of the crucifix. So this is actually from a uh, hardhead. And you can see this is what people are always afraid of when they're talking about the hardhead fish is this uh, dorsal spine they have right here that's on a swivel, uh, but it's jagged and the, the, the serrations are going down. So it's easily to cut you, but they have uh, bacteria that can live in their slime that can really cause uh, some harm to you if it, uh, if it happens to cut you. But they have otoliths in here and I already cut these out. You can see there's a, you can see if that other one would fall out of there, but it's got these gel filled cavities on the bottom side of their skull. So this is the bottom side and that you see the crucifix of like the cross and Jesus on there. Uh, this would be the dorsal side, the, the top side. Uh, the, but you'll see these little bitty pockets here. These are cavities that have gel in them where their, uh, their otolith is. And so this is what we're looking for, the ear bone. But you can hear it. The, there's one still left in there that's rattling around. And actually, I can, I can see it in there. Oh, there, it just fell out. Okay, so there's your two ear bones right there. Uh, and they, they fell out of this. Now, for educational purposes, I keep them in there. I take this to schools. Um, so let me, I'm gonna put those back in there. But let's open this one up. And, and actually, before I use my machete, which this is always a fun way to get into stuff, uh, but sometimes if you're at the beach, you might be able to shake them out of there. So, because you might want to keep the skull to, you know, keep on your desk at work to freak people out or put it in your family's mailbox or something, you know? So there's one, there's two ways you can get these out of here. You can shake it. Now they might be too big uh, to get out of that hole, but th there's also another hole that would go uh, in the front. So sometimes you can shake it that way, but if it doesn't work, you know I'm cutting into it, right? Okay. Now, this isn't the only thing I'm gonna be uh, showing y'all today. The other thing I'm gonna be telling y'all about is we're gonna go to the Heart Research Institute and they're gonna be cutting into a 480 pound tuna, bluefin tuna skull. And, and it's gonna be huge. And you're gonna be amazed at the size of the otolith in one of those fish. Now, they have big eyes and they fish by sight. 
whereas like your black drum is going to be fishing by sound. So as you can imagine, the otoliths, so the ear bones, are bigger in a fish that fishes by sound versus one that fishes uh, by sight. So the eyes of the bluefin tuna are huge. So let's, ha! Boom, that's it right there. Now it ruined my skull, which I can find another one of those, but look how big those are. Now you've probably heard um, of these things grunting when you catch them. Now if I compare that to this other fish over here, uh, which uh, also uh, the, the catfish, um, you know, the hardhead, they also fish by, uh, by, by sound. You've heard them grunting if you catch them as well. But look, okay, here's the black drum fish versus uh, the smaller hardhead fish. So you can see the size there and the shape is different. So you can tell the species, you know, by the shape and then also cutting into them of how old they are and all that other information. So scientifically, very important. Okay, I wanna put this one back. And then this, of course, the skull's all busted up, but uh, you can see the cavity where it would lay inside of there, inside a gel. So, boom, okay. So now that we've seen that, let's go to the Heart Research Institute. They, they can only get, and y'all are gonna be amazed at this, and, and I know that uh, uh, Dr. Banks, who we're gonna go talk to, she'll tell you this as well, but you will probably never see a bluefin tuna. And you know why? Because in the entire Gulf of Mexico, uh, the allotment for being able to catch them is five. And I don't mean five per person. I mean five for the entire Gulf of Mexico. And so whenever somebody catches a bluefin tuna, they have, but right when they catch it, like not when they get back, but right when they catch it, they have to communicate with the feds and let them know, look, we caught a bluefin tuna. Boom, one gone. Only four more in the entire Gulf of Mexico can be caught. So the likelihood of you ever seeing one of these is pretty rare. And uh, Dr. Banks has actually removed the otoliths from like, uh, I think 13 of them is the number that we're gonna see today. So uh, with only being able to get five a year, that's pretty good. And the reason is, is uh, that you can only get that many is because there's so few of these fish left in the world because of tuna fishing. And, um, and they go for a lot of money. I mean, some of these big 600 pounders uh, over in um, like Asia, they can go for millions of dollars and uh, so that's why people want them. But the thing is you can't actually fish for them. You can't be targeting that fish. It's like if you accidentally catch it, okay, you can bring it on board. Then you bring it, you, you call them, say I got it. And then uh, the good thing is, is the Heart Research Institute can take the head. So you get the, so whoever catches it gets to keep all the meat and everything, but you can get the head and then we can take it and, and cut out the, the ear bones and the ear bones on a fish this size is actually going to surprise you how small it is. But let's go to the Heart Research Institute. They're going to show you the process of how they get it out of the head. They're going to show you um, uh, all kinds of information, tell you all kinds of information about the research that they're doing with these otoliths. So let's head over to the Heart Research Institute. Okay, we're off the beach now. Let's go into the laboratory for Sport Fish Center. Let's talk to the experts about these otoliths and the ears that these fish have. I'm real interested to see not only how big those otoliths are from that big tuna that, that they got, but maybe they can compare some other fish that they catch around here at the Gulf of Mexico that maybe we find stuff on the beach like uh, hardheads or uh, the black drum we were talking about and see if there's different size ear bones uh, inside the fish. So let's go into the lab, talk to Dr. Dr. Banks and see what she says. All right, come on. Hi, I'm Dr. Kesley Banks and I work at the Center for Sport Fish Science and Conservation at the Heart Research Institute. So we have an Atlantic bluefin tuna. Um, it is a controversially managed species in the Atlantic and Gulf of Mexico. So something kind of unique to this species is that 
There's only five that are allowed to be landed in the Gulf of Mexico, which comes to about 2,500 pounds because we're a sub quota of the Atlantic quota. And we can only take very large individuals that are considered trophy or 73 inches and higher. So when these rare species come in, we like to collect as much scientific data as possible. So we'll be taking out the otoliths for aging and the eyeballs to remove the lenses for um, bom uh, radiocarbon bomb dating. So that allows us to see where these individuals are spawned and where they're coming back to spawn. This one weighed about 450 pounds gutted. And where did it come from? It came from one of the floating uh, gas rigs offshore about 150 miles. So we have, well, this research is new for us. In the last couple of years, we've been able to sample 11. And since there's only five landed in the entire Gulf every year, that's a pretty hefty number. <laughs> um, once we get the otoliths out of this, we'll go through the aging process so that otolith will get put in resin and then we'll count rings like a tree to determine the age of the fish. So we look at a variety of species here, um, all the way from bluefin tuna down to tiny little mahi otoliths. And so, ironically, this bluefin tuna's otolith is one of the smaller otoliths that we look at. Um, a red snapper otolith is one of the bigger otoliths that we look at. And then I believe you found a tarpon on the beach we were able to pull an otolith out of. And it's pretty small. So this is a snapper, red drum, tarpons in the center, and bluefin tuna. So once the otoliths are pulled from the fish, we then will begin the process of placing them in resin. We, because these are fragile structures, we need to put them in a hardener essentially before we put them on this saw where we'll do a thin section and cut so we can age. So once we, we make this thin section, we'll put these that we put in resin into the saw, we'll create a thin section about half a millimeter thick which allows us to see through the otolith and then we're able to count those rings like a tree and tell you the age of the fish. Hey, I'm uh, Matt Strike uh, with the Center for Sport Fish Science and Conservation. I, uh, today we're gonna cut some otoliths from the bluefin tuna that we've been able to get from uh, anglers bringing those in. Um, and so we're gonna, we got them in epoxy here and we're ready to cut them and see how old they are. So now I'm going over uh, one more millimeter the blade is about half a millimeter, so by moving over one, you get about a half millimeter thin section. And then just iron it again, just to make sure we don't go too thin, because we also don't want the otolith to come out of the, the thin section and crack. There we Whoa. go. Okay. So. Wow. So we've got our uh, we've got our thin section now. Um and uh, we'll clean it off with some, some DI water, and then we can take it over to the microscope and count the rings. All right, so now I'm, uh, I'm ready to age this fish. I've got it under the, under the light. Uh, it's actually fairly clear uh, annuli, or the, the annual rings that we're counting to age the fish. Um, so let me just count right here, let's see. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So this fish should be about 16 years old, um, which is similar to some of the other bluefin that we've got. Um, the size at those ages is very variable. Um, so you can have like a 15 year old fish that's a lot larger than a 20 year old fish uh, or vice versa, it just depends. Um, so the length isn't really a great uh, estimate of how old they are but um, at these ages but they are large mature bluefin tuna and uh, super super important for the Gulf of Mexico. Wow okay I hope y'all appreciated the information they get from otoliths. Who, who would have known that this little ear bone inside of this huge tuna they could age it and that fish was only 16 years old that's almost unbelievable but I'm so glad that we're able to get that information from the, and that we get to do this stuff right here at the Heart Research Institute. Okay, with that, I'm gonna get back on the beach and see what else we can find. Hope you all enjoyed this episode of Beach Coming. We'll talk to you next time. Bye.